way Let your anointing have its way Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Your word says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. In Acts 2.21 I am calling on you. I pray and ask Jesus to come into my heart and be Lord over my life. According to Romans 10, 9 through 10, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I do that now. I confess that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I am now reborn. I am a Christian, a child of Almighty God. I am saved. You also said in your word, If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give, give the Holy Spirit to them that ask for it? Luke 11:13. I'm also asking you to fill me with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, rise up within me as I praise God. I fully expect to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. Acts 2 and 4. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I want you to begin to praise God for filling you with the Holy Spirit. Speak those words and symbols you receive. Not in your own language, but the language given to you by the Holy Spirit. You have to use your own voice. God will not force you to speak. Don't be concerned with how it sounds. It is a heavenly language. Continue with the blessings God has given you and pray in the Spirit every day. You are a born-again, Spirit-filled believer. You'll never be the same. Find now, if you don't have a good church home, I want you to find a good church home that boldly preaches God's word and obeys it. Become part of a church family who will love and care for you as you love and care for them. We need to be connected to each other. It increases our strength in God. It's God's plan for us. Make it a habit to watch. For your leaders lead. Amen. Who is the Holy Spirit? If we are to really know God, we must not only know the Father and the Son, but we must also know the Holy Spirit in a real and personal way. God is one of the essence, yet it is identified in three distinct and individual persons. Each person of the Godhead is equal. 
and each share in all of the attributes of God. Each person of the Godhead, as revealed separately, has a de definite function and personality. The Holy Spirit, as the Father and the Son, desires for us to come into a personal relationship with Him. He wants us to live and walk intimately united with Him, recognizing the importance of His function in our daily lives. The Holy Spirit was part of the Trinity at creation, and this is what we call the three that are one. They can be called the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you go to Genesis 1, 1 through 4, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. The Spirit of God was a wind, breath, blast, tempted, a whirlwind. In Psalms 104 and 30, it says, When you sent your spirit, they are created. And you renewed the face of the earth. Amen. You notice, so if you notice in Genesis 1, 1 through 4, we have the Father God who created. He created with his mind. He thought a thing into existence. The Spirit of God, which we call the Holy Spirit, he hovered over the waters. He was looking and watching and seeing what the Father was creating in his mind. He was making sure he was using his power to bring it into existence. And then we have the Word, which spoke it. Let there be light. The Father, which is the thinking, the Spirit, which is the doing. Now, during the period of the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit didn't dwell in man. He came upon them to anoint them for a special act or service. And we can look at 1 Samuel 10 and 6, which says, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you in power, and you will prophesy with them, and you will be changed into a different person. So the Spirit of God existed before man. Amen. If we look in Genesis 6 and 3, it says, Then the Lord said, My Spirit will not be with man forever, for he is mortal. So we know already that in the book of Revelation, there is a period of time when the Holy Spirit will leave this earth. Amen. We can prove that the Holy Spirit um, existed in the Old Testament if we go to Ezekiel 2 and 2, which says, As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised to my feet and I heard him speaking to me so this is the proof that the Holy Spirit existed in the Old Testament amen we also know during the time of the New Testament the Holy Spirit still came upon men and women for a specific function but following Christ's return to heaven and the day of Pentecost he came to abide within man in Luke 1 15 it says for he will be great in the sight of the Lord he never to take wine or other fermented drink and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit 
even from birth. And in Luke 1 15, we're talking about John the Baptist. John the Baptist, we can say, was the first one that was filled with the Holy Spirit. Because in Luke 1 41, it says, When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. So because of John the Baptist in Elizabeth's womb, John's spirit acknowledged Mary's salutation, greeting to Elizabeth, and confirmed that Mary was pregnant with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. So who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. Separate entity has its own personality and he's here to comfort us, to be our counselor, our advocate, the man to guide us. We can also say the Holy Spirit is the power of God. As Jesus needed the power of the Holy Spirit in his life, even so we must receive the same power of the Holy Spirit in full in our lives today. When we look into Acts 2 and 1, it tells us when the Holy Spirit came and exactly what he did. Because something different happened. It says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Two, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Three, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Four, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So it was during the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost now, he enters man and fills us with the Holy Spirit. So the difference between the Old Testament, where the Holy Spirit just sat upon them, and the New Testament, where the Holy Spirit now dwells in us. Amen. And all of this came about because Jesus Christ went on the cross, died for our sins, and on the third day he rose again. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But I want to stress something. The Holy Spirit will not enter into you or anyone else without being invited amen we saw the holy spirit in jesus resurrection power we saw the holy spirit in the power in paul's ministry in ephesians 1 19 and 20 it says and his incomparably great power for us who believe that power is like the workings of his mighty strength, which he exerts in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in his heavenly realm. In 1 Corinthians 2, 4 and 5, it says, My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. In Romans 15, 17 through 19, it says, By the power of signs and miracles, through the power of the Spirit, so from Jerusalem all the way around to the Scythium, I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. Amen. By studying the works of the Holy Spirit in the life and ministry of Jesus, we can understand the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives and ministry today. What does it mean to receive the Holy Spirit? Turn with me to Acts 8, 14 through 17. 
Now when the apostles of Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For it had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Today, this is how we receive the Holy Spirit when an apostle or pastor lay their hands on us to receive the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I confess your word concerning health and healing. As I do, I believe that your word will not return to your void, but it will accomplish what it says. In the name of Jesus, I believe I am healed according to 1 Peter 2.24 and also your people that is hearing this message on today. Your word says Jesus himself took our infirmities and bored our sicknesses, Matthew 8, 17. Therefore, with great boldness and confidence, I stand on the authority of your word and declare that we are redeemed from the curse of sickness. I refuse to tolerate its symptoms. Satan, I speak to you in Jesus' name. And I proclaim that you, your principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places are bound from operating against us in any way. I am loose from your assignment. We are loose from your assignment. I am the property of Almighty God, and I give you no place in me. We are the property of Almighty God, and we give you no place in us. We dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, and we abide under the shadows of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. Now, Father, I believe your word that says the angels of the Lord encamp around about us and deliver us from every evil work. No evil shall befall us. No plague or calamity shall come near our dwelling. I confess that the word abides in me, and it is life and medicine to my flesh. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus operates in me, making me free from the law of sin and death. I hold fast to my confession of your word, and I stand immovable, knowing that health and healing are mine and ours now in jesus mighty name amen amen amen